What is going on guys, it's Crazy Pickle and welcome back to another Skyforge video. Today's video we're gonna look at the Necromancer, next a DPS class. Again, we're gonna go over every ability, symbols, class as usual. Alright guys, let's get started. First ability, Ghostly Strike. Inflicts X amount of damage to the enemy, can be used to start a combo attack. Second ability is the Cursed Land, creates an area of Cursed Land. The movement speed of all enemies in the area is reduced by 50%. Enemies that die in the Cursed Land turn into Carrions up to 3 and fight on the Necromancer side for 20 seconds. Consumes 3% of health and generates 3 points of Necrotic Energy, which is your blue bar underneath your health, if the Necromancer is in combat when using this ability. Pulls the enemies that try to leave the Cursed Land back to the center. The effect can be applied to each enemy no more than once every 12 seconds. This is more of a combination, which is the Hellfire, inflicts X amount of damage to all enemies in an 8 yard radius in a selected enemy and X amount of damage every second for 5 seconds. If Hellfire hits 3 or more enemies, the next Hellfire attacks will inflict 50% more damage. The effect stacks up to 2 times and lasts 5 seconds. And another combination which is the Plague Storm, inflicts X amount of damage to the enemy every 1.25 seconds for 8 seconds. The damage of ability grows proportionally with the amount of health the target loses. Up to 200% damage bonus when enemy's health is below 20%. If the target dies, its body will be picked up to inflict X amount of damage to the next enemy, use this ability again to drop the body. The damage is increased by 40% for every enemy killed with the ability up to 200% damage bonus. Next ability is Skull Throw, inflicts X amount of damage to the enemy, consumes 10% of the Necromancer's health and generates 10 points of necrotic energy. When hitting monsters below the elite level and player characters, the damage is increased by 30% for 8 seconds. Ritual Strike, Plague Storm and Hellfire have respectfully 25, 25 and 10% chance to apply Toothy Grind to the Necromancer for 15 seconds. Baird Faints resets the remaining cooldown of Skull Throw, increases the damage to the next use by 100% and a critical hit chance by 50%. Next ability, which is the Leech, the Necromancer shifts into the Leech form which allows them to use special abilities that restores health. The more resource is available, which is your Necrotic Energy, when the ability is used, the longer the Necromancer stays in that form. So now in the Leech stance we only have two abilities we can use. First one is the Sickening Nightmare, deals X amount of damage to the enemy and restores health to the Necromancer every second for 10 seconds, stacks up to 20 times. Volley of Darkness, deals X amount of damage and knocks enemies back, the Necromancer recovers health in proportion to the number of flies released by the Sickening Nightmare. Next ability, Shadow of the Past, creates a magic statue. After 5 seconds, it pulls the Necromancer towards it and restores their health to the amount they had at the time the ability was used. Ghostly Allies, ability to summon monsters to fight on the Necromancer side. We're gonna go to the summon instance right now and the first will be Summon Ghostly Vipers. Summons 3 snakes that takes 45% of damage intended to the Necromancer and distract enemies for 10 seconds consumes 15% of the Necromancer health and generates 15 points of necrotic energy. Viper's Bite will slow the enemy down by 70% and if the enemy tries to move, the poison from the bite will inflict 300% more damage. Killed Vipers have a 75% chance to rejoin the fight. Next one is the Summon Ghostly Skeleton. Summons a skeleton that inflicts X amount of damage to several enemies every 6 seconds consumes 15% of the Necromancer health and creates 15 points of Necrotic Energy. And the last one is the Summon Ghostly Carrion. Summons a Carrion that inflicts significant damage to a single target, X amount of damage from a violent attack every 0.5 seconds, consumes 15% of Necromancer health and creates 15 points of Necrotic Energy. Next ability, Possession. Increases the damage dealt of summoned allies by 200% for 12 seconds, completely restoring their health and removing all control effects when it is first used and every 3 seconds for the next 12 seconds, consumes 7% of the necromancer health and creates 7 points of necrotic energy. 
The ability is available in PvE adventures only. Next one is the Rift of Horror. Creates a rift in the ground that inflicts X amount of damage. Monsters in the area of the effect takes X amount of damage every 0.5 seconds for 15 seconds, as well as get into a panic for 10 seconds. Consumes 8% of the necromancer health and creates 8 points of necrotic energy. The ability is available in PvE adventures only. Ultimate ability Ghostly Flow summons three waves of ghost that deals X amount of damage to all enemies in their path, and three cursed carrions that will fight on the necromancer's side for 20 seconds. Victims of Ghostly Flow have their current abilities interrupted as they are stunned for one second and immobilized. They then slowly recover their movement speed over the next 15 seconds generates 11 point of necrotic energy and reduce the cooldown of leech form by 6 seconds for each affected enemy for each of the three ways of ghosts. Finishing Strike Claws of Death deals fatal damage to the enemy, available when the enemy has a small amount of health left, increases the damage of Plague Storm by 55%, critical hit chance and damage bonus by 70% and lets you use it final attack grants 3 extra companions attacks to the necromancer. We only have one talent and it's only a Lyrium 9 talent from Thea, which is Spaced Mist. Summoned allies of the necromancer get a boost. Ghostly Vipers have 5 times more health and redirect 60% of damage to themselves instead of 45. Ghostly Skeleton pulls enemies towards it, inflicts X amount of damage per second and Ghostly Carrion gains the ability to inflict X amount of damage per second from a distance. In PvP abilities we have Shield of the Banished. Banishes all summoned allies and surrounds the necromancer with a shield that absorbs damage equal to 200% of the necromancer health and protects them against control effect for 16 seconds. The ability is available in PvP adventures only. Next one is the Grave. Pulls the selected target and nearby enemies to the cursed land if one is present or 24 yard back inflicting X amount of damage, consumes 6% of the necromancer health and creates 6 points of necrotic energy, available in PvP adventures only. And we have the talent, which is the Veil of Death. In the Leech form, damage dealt is increased 45% and incoming damage is reduced by 45%. Hitting an enemy with a Reaper Sweep temporarily reduces incoming damage by an extra 45%. In Leech form, we still have the Sickening Nightmare, but the only ability changes it's the right click from a Volley of Darkness to the Reaper Sweep, which deals X amount of damage to nearby enemies and restores 15% health if it hits one target, 20% health if it hits two targets, 25% health if it hits three and more targets. An ability also restores 15% of health for every killed enemy. Again, with the symbols you can play around, depends on what you're doing. We're just gonna go straight for the class symbols. We have first, Will of the Dead allows you to revive a fallen ally with 40% of health for 20 seconds once every 3 minutes. The revived ally deals 25% more damage and is immune to control effects. The ability can be used on a fallen ally only once every 10 seconds. Dark Magic Plague Storm and Summoned Allies deals 50% more damage to targets on a cursed land. Ancient Burial The recovery rate of Ghostly Flow is increased by 2% for each percent of the Necromancer health they are missing. Skull Throw reduces the cooldown of Ghostly Flow by 5 seconds and by 10 seconds if it has been boosted by Toothy Grind. So pretty much right now the best class symbol will be the Dark Magic because the Plague Storm and Summon Allies deals 50% more damage when the enemy is in a cursed land. Now let's talk about the equipment. Again, artifacts gonna be the same, same story, whatever the artifacts you have you can use. If you cannot get the legendary, your best will be the Fragment of Darkness. Moving on to the weapons, um, so first one weapon, it was I believe the demon one that came out. It basically summons the demon that has a shitloads of health and it's pretty much unkillable so you can kind of do the solo missions with it. But again, still with the more idea focus of power or the harvest ritual, you don't really need the demon weapon. So 
the the focus of power probably the best weapon for the single target if you're doing for example distortions even though this weapon people still using for like distortions and stuff like that the difference between this two the Morodea focus of power you simply boost your abilities when you're in leech form so you deal crazy damage well not really crazy but really good damage when you're using your leech and the abilities in leech form which is just two abilities and of course because the Morana Harvest Ritual is more of a AoE ability. Uh, the duration of cooldown Cursed Land is 8 seconds. Cursed Land accumulates damage dealt by its creator to enemies in the area of the effect. When it disappears, it deals the damage to enemies that remain in this area. So let's just kind of show it a little bit how it actually works. Target the enemy, place the Cursed Land. You can see the ball growing right there. It's not dealing damage yet. It just kind of like absorbs, I guess, something. And then boom, it explodes and then it deals damage. It's kind of going to be a personal preference which way you want to go. I think for me personally, the Moradea Focus of Power is a little bit easier for the rotation compared to Morana. Even though it's not a big difference, just slightly different ways how you place the your abilities and which abilities you use in a different order. But for me, because I'm pretty much preferably go for like a more of an easier mode or something like that, then... Moradea Focus of Power will be best way for me. Don't know which one to suggest. Uh, both weapons actually good, depends on the situation. And like I said again, some people using this weapon still in distortions, maybe like avatars and stuff like that. And again, jewelry and gems of power are the same if you're going for the DPS. So, Necromancer. Good class for both PvE and PvP. It is also actually relying on pay to win weapons to a point but more of a for PvP than PvE. In PvE, you can still deal a decent damage, uh, just purple or maybe basic legendary weapon if you can get a hands on it. This class has some enemy control options as well, like Cursed Land or if you have Illyrium 9 talent, you can summon Skeleton and he can pull small enemies to him, plus deal a good damage as well. A couple of Necro's abilities actually received a small adjustment, which is a Cursed Land. Now, instead of aiming where you want to place your Cursed Land, you can simply target an enemy or ally and use it. It will place it on top of the enemy slash ally you're targeting. I think it's a really, really good change. Sometimes it was a little bit of pain in the ass to aim where you want to put the Cursed Land, but I think with this change, it might slightly be a little bit challenging in certain situations, but I think it's a really, really good change. Moving on to the Ghostly Flow, which is the Necro's ultimate ability. Cooldown been reduced from 6 minutes to 3 minutes. I like that as well. Cooldowns and the rest of the abilities are fairly good, so no complaints there. You can heal yourself when you are in your Leech form, which is also nice, since most of your abilities eat in your health when you use them. One thing kind of got me by surprise, which is Talents. It only has a Lyrium 9 talent for PvE slash PvP and an extra talent just for PvP. That's kind of a big disappointment. This class could have at least like 4 or 5 talents in total. Not really sure why devs decided to make it that way, but it is what it is. I think there is nothing else I can think of about either good or the bad things about this class. In general, it is a good class, but, of course, there is always a but, I wouldn't recommend getting this class if you just started playing the game. It is also a default class, so that makes it is also a default class. So it is lacking damage as well compared to the level where this game is at the moment. If you have anything to add, please leave a comment down below and don't forget to smash that like button or dislike. Also subscribe and hit that notification that you're not gonna miss a new video or when I go live. Follow me on Twitter, join my Discord server, all the links in the description. Until the next time, take care.